On today's motorcycle therapy, we're in Bolivia. We start off on a boat. And then things get really congested in traffic. Then things open up a bit again when we get to the salt flats in Bolivia. We left Peru and into Bolivia with the easiest border crossing I think that I've ever done in my life. Well, up until that point, it was certainly one of the easiest, yeah. And then the next day, we took a really fun, awesome ferry across a little channel on Lake Titicaca. We got dragged across the lake on a raft with almost non-existent floorboards that were cracking and breaking underneath your feet as you were trying to not fall over. Yeah. Anyway, there's a whole video about that. There's a whole video about that. It's called Elle on a Boat. So after we got off of the ferry, we carried on and yes. we headed towards La Paz. That's yes. Highest capital city in the world, I hear. That's what they say. 3,600 and some meters above sea level. Which is what in feet? Oh, it's like 11,975 feet. I just happened to know that. In that elevation, my motorcycle was really struggling for air. And, it, you know, I'm riding a KLR 650. Bonus points for fuel injected motorcycles at high elevations. There's a bunch of bonus points for that motorcycle. But mm -hmm. on, on this occasion, a fuel injected motorcycle would be so much better. The elevation was making my motorcycle struggle, mm -hmm. but also we weren't moving that fast anyway, were we? Once we got into the city, holy cow, was the traffic a bit thick. This was so congested. It was amazing. But also, as we were descending, the roads were getting steeper. Like so steep that I thought, if I have to pull a U-turn on this road, it's not going to be easy to do. And if I happen to tip over, good luck pulling it back up again. Yeah, and they were getting narrower, so it was a really bad combination of those things. And then we found ourselves in the middle of a street market. Yeah. And I was... Middle, middle. Jeremy keeps going. And you can see me pulling over here to wait because I'm like, there's no way that he's going to keep going down there. You clearly can't drive down there. No one else is driving there. Oh, but you can. Aww. Especially if, I'm, if you're on a motorcycle. So I was able to meander through the stalls and mm -hmm. through the stands, as they would say in England. Mm -hmm. And I made it squeak through. And I'm talking to Elle on the intercom. And I'm saying, yep, we've got blue skies over here. Follow me. He disappeared. He completely disappeared. I got down to where I last saw him. And then I knew he turned right. And I'm like... I don't understand how you turned. There's nowhere to go. Like, he couldn't fit. And if you see me squishing between this stall and the next one, I'm looking to see if my luggage is going to clear. Mm -hmm. At one point, somebody actually... Seat. Yeah. yeah. And then we see this guy carrying a whole bunch of flat screen TVs. He was walking, pulling all those TVs behind him, and he was going faster than we were on our bikes because we couldn't squish through traffic. Mm -hmm. That's our La Paz journey. We had to go in the city because my bike was due for a service. I wanted to find a BMW place, I found one. We knew we wanted to get there and they could service my bike, so we stayed three nights. Mm -hmm. One day, we were, I think it was New Year's Day, mm -hmm. we decided to check out these cool cable cars that we yeah. had seen all over. All over. But yep. that city is so steep, it works perfectly and it carries you above all the congestion. It's wonderful. So we spent a day uh, doing that. Unfortunately, we don't have much footage of that. We probably could have taken a lot more footage. Yep, but we, we didn't. didn't. So uh, I spent all day yesterday making this illustration. When we wow. left La Paz, we were heading to uni. And then we just stopped in any town that was close enough to uni that was at the end of our day. So we found a room. It was basically the only room we could find, and I told El. Well, lower your expectations. But I already know we're on the side of a road in a tiny, lower. small town with no tourism. Lower. Lower. Lower the expectations. Spartan, you say? I say Spartan. All right, it's we'll see what it's like in there. Lower your expectations. But we did find a place to safely park our motorcycles, and yep. we had a two beds and we had a shared bathroom with other people, but that wasn't so bad. In the morning, the plan was to carry on to uni, which we did. Without any breakfast, that was a big problem. Rookie mistake. We drove away hungry. Mm -hmm. Now we had some nuts and some snack bars and stuff like that, but they were insufficient and it was cold. Mm -hmm. So now we're hungry, kind of bored mm -hmm. and cold heading mm -hmm. towards uni. And I start doing the math on how much gas I have to get to uni, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm not gonna make it. We were keeping our eyes open for gas, but this little town was so small. So with a little bit of searching and a little bit of false starts, we finally found a lady. We found a brick building with no signs anywhere until you drove right up to it and it said gasolina or diesel on it. And she poured some gasoline into our tanks out from of a watering, watering can. can. 
Now we're gassed up. We still don't have any food. Why didn't we get food there? I don't think she had any. Like we couldn't even go inside the building. I think she lived there and she had just had a big bucket of gas in her backyard. So we lit off for uni once again. When we got to uni, we could not find food. Mm -hmm. And you had to pee. Yeah, that's right. I had to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I was hungry and we were hungry. both cold. And we grumpy. Yeah. So I found a restaurant using my eyeballs. Elle was following her GPS yeah. that said where the restaurants were. Yeah. And I just said, I'm stopping here. And uh, I said, okay, yeah. bye. We basically almost broke up. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We did for a little bit, for like two hours. We had a mini, yeah, we had a trial separation <laughs> yeah. that lasted for a couple of hours. And I thought, no, I could turn around and go meet him at the place where he's stopping. I don't want to. And am I being petty? Am I being, um, like, am I just pouting for no reason? Or is this okay? And is this maybe a smart decision? And I thought about it and I went, yeah, this is actually what I want. To sit down and eat alone without Jeremy. No arguing, no rehashing, no rediscussing the whole thing again. Just quiet. Love. Meal. This is. And then we went to the train graveyard. We were not exactly the happiest for the rest of the day, but we did manage to get a long road to the train graveyard, which was pretty cool. Took a lot of photos, hung out, rode around in the mud. Elle says that we were not the happiest with each other. I think that's a bit of an understatement. We did have some food and we were feeling a little bit better because of that, but the food was unable to undo some of the things that we had said earlier. Our moods were kind of gray, just like the sky that evening, and it was a fitting setting for us to hash things out at the train graveyard. Fortunately, we were able to pull ourselves together and patch things up that night because the next day we were off for an adventure. We spent the next uh, day on the salt flats. Too bad we didn't have a motorcycle there. Well, too bad it wasn't dry. <laughs> yeah, I was excited about riding my motorcycle on the salt flats, but as you can see, we arrived at the wrong time of the year. Who needs to deal with all that salt water? We actually made amends. We had a little bit of chat in the hotel. And we had a good chat. Actually, and yep. Jeremy initiated that part, so kudos to Jeremy <laughs> for that. And we headed for Chile. It was all dirt and just dirt in Bolivia. Um, the dirt was hard packed. It was no problem unless it had rained, which would make it really muddy and slippery. Then on our way out of Bolivia, it was still pretty groovy. Wide open, flat, but um, still awesome. Mm -hmm. We still have to take photos quite a bit. Oh yeah. Those balanced rocks and the weird rock landscapes. Right beside this cool balancing rock and we're in Bolivia and that's the road we were on. It is amazing this view. And quiet. Almost no other humans around. It feels a little bit like you're almost on another planet which was lovely as long as you had food and snacks with you. That's right. <laughs> By the way, some of you might be wondering why we spayed so, so little time in Bolivia. We had always thought, yes, Bolivia is worth exploring. Mm -hmm. We want to see definitely more than La Paz mm -hmm. and Uni. Yeah. We'll do that on the way back yeah. because we have to ride all the way back to Canada, don't yeah. we? Yeah, so lots of time. We're only gonna see half the stuff on the way down and on the way back, we'll see the other half the stuff. No that didn't happen, and of you course. know the rest of the story. We got stuck in Uruguay because of COVID-19, a whole rigmarole. We had to end up shipping our motorcycles home. We just got them home, and there's videos on all of that if you care to search them out. I'll leave you there, that's Bolivia. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, and um, leave a comment below. Elle, where are we? We Quick are thoughts. in Chile. We made it to Chile. Mm -hmm and compared to the other countries we've been in so far? It's pretty fabulous scenery. Sometimes it reminds me of Canada with mountains and snow-capped peaks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes desert like this reminds me of Utah. And we're just staying here for a couple of days and then into Argentina. And then back to Chile. Back and to back Chile. To Argentina. And then back to Argentina. Yeah. See you there.